head out. How's the, how's the team feeling? How's the vibe around everything? Uh, good. We expect uh, Roman Torres to travel with, with the team, or you don't want to reveal that right now? No comment. <laughs> Probably not. Okay. I was fair to you yesterday, right? Yeah. Or was that yesterday or the day before? Yesterday. Somebody asked yesterday. Monday. Yeah. Uh, probably not. Cool. Have you talked to Brad about his role with Torres coming back? Have you talked to Brad about his role with Torres coming back? We've started that discussion. Right now, uh, Brad is playing center back. And if, if I decide to make changes, then I will let him know first. Not you guys, Brad. How important, Donald Searson, how important is it to have players that can play multiple positions in the same of smart soccer that you talked about? Well, okay, so you could, you could take Brad as a really, really good example. So I think his worth to this franchise over the years has been tremendous. Now, you might get a differing opinion that he's never kind of settled, you know, you, you, I, I'm cognizant of that. And that's why good communication between the two of us is, is, is key. But I see a lot of value to it. Now, do I think he should be playing four different positions? No. No. I, I, I'd like him to settle into one and then as an option two. And then maybe if we're desperate in one game and there, you know, somebody comes up lame and I got to shove him into a third, that, that's extreme. But having a guy be able to play one or two positions, I could, you know, I could liken it to, you know, Christian Roldan. You guys have asked me about Christian. So Christian can play as a holding guy. He can play as a two-way guy. He played earlier with Zig in a 4-4-2 out wide right. So that little bit of versatility is, is also a plus for coaches to have as well. So I would put kind of Brad and Christian in that role of, you know, versatile guys. They have a lot of ton of value to the team, but I don't want to overdo it. I, I, I can't overdo it. It's not good for them. Sure. And Jovan's a guy who's played further up the field as a winger for his national team. Do, do you still view him as a defender first? Yeah, right now I do, Matt. Yeah. I think he's, he's done okay. What are your overall impressions of Jordan Morris's rookie season at this point? What do you think he's done well? What would you like to see him do better? <laughs> uh, he scored a lot of goals for rookie. I'm not so sure he's on Laren's pace anymore. Uh, stat guys would have to tell me that. Uh, Laren's, I mean, talking about Orlando, I mean, that kid did really well for him. So, you know, Jordan's done really well for us, maybe not total number of goals, but he certainly brings a lot of the same things. He's strong, he's fast, he's powerful. So in some ways they are a little similar. Uh, the other thing is, you know, on the, on the flip side of that, of course, we'd love to have Jordy have one or two more goals, you know, because he's put himself in really good spots. And once he kind of, you know, gets the hang of it and seasoned veteran, those those will go in and we'll be winning a few more games. When you, when you have a young guy like that coming in, what do you think are the most important things to kind of keep them level through the grind of the professional season and kind of doing the whole thing that they haven't done before? I just saw him talking to Dave Tenney, our fitness guru. And keeping Jordan physically fit because, you know, he does have a medical condition that he has to address. So making sure that he's addressing that, that Dave keeps him in top shape physically. And then mentally for me, just making sure that I give him as much confidence as I can and, you know, help him develop because he's already got a ton of good starting points. His starting points are up here. So just a little bit of confidence and you know help from the other people on the staff. Your thoughts on facing Orlando who did also made a change, got a result with Jason in this first in their first match, but the the match in uh, Orlando. It'll be a tough game. I mean every every game will be tough. Uh, curious to see how Jason continues to put, you know, his stamp on on that team. Uh, so it'll be a challenge for our guys, my guys to, you know, make sure we view the tape and review and dissect how they might play, how they might line up and make sure that we're matching up. But, you know, we're in the same boat. I mean, we're going to have an energized team. They're going to go out. We're going to win the game. We're going to try and win the game. That's that goes without question.
Were those pre and post game player only chats? Is that something you did with the Sounders before they came to MLS? No. Nope. No, the, the the USL team was, you know, a different beast. I always said my piece after the game, and walked out of the room. So, if they were talking amongst themselves, maybe I just wasn't aware of it. Uh, this is a little bit more uh, a bigger stage, and so I want to say my piece, get kind of the peripheral staff, the equipment guy, some of those guys out of the room, let them talk for a couple of minutes and then everybody's back to work. It's not like it's a massive deal. I just want them to feel like it's their team. Have you had any feedback from the players about that yet? Yeah, they all like it. They all like it. I let them, I let them do most of their stuff today, you know, playing a little 11 v 11. Here's your teams. We're going to start the game in a minute. Talk amongst yourselves. What are the tactics? What do you guys want to do? Then we, after the games, we come in, talk about what they did, how they did it, why they did it, make them answer some questions. So it's been okay. You went with a, a couple different kind of looks during the 11 v 11. You, are you just trying to get a sense of how guys work together out there and who, who fits where? Just trying to fool all you guys. <laughs> Keep you guys on your toes. You see a difference uh, in the let other- me, Let me answer that oh, question I on a serious <laughs> note. Oh, I was gonna run with that. <laughs> On a serious note, uh, yes, there's obviously I've seen the players, you know, throughout the course of the, you know, the last seven years. So I, I got a good feel of where the guys are. But what I want to do is promote again a little bit of total team tactics. So so the entire team is knows when to press, when not to press, when we're going to keep possession, when we're going to play direct so that if I bring a sub on, that that guy knows the entire team tactics. So that it's kind of a just a different way of coaching, you know, the 23 field players, or we had 22 field players today, just making sure that they understand what my expectations are on top of me getting to see a couple of different combinations and getting the new guys uh, intermixed with the squad. With each session that goes by, do you see a chemistry level that rises with each player with Ladero? Yeah. He, it, it's a two-way street. I mean, he's really good, so you can pass him the ball with a ton of confidence and also vice versa. I, mean, I think Nico's getting some confidence with the rest of the group and knowing who can deal with which pass and how he passes the different teammates. So I think it's coming. You've watched Ozzy this year it does seem like he's sort of risen his game up again to another level where does this sort of campaign rank with his best sounders years and how important has he been for you guys this year it's up there what 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 i love about ozzy is that he's very consistent you know i know what i get out of him on the field so for me that's that's comforting to know i put him out there i know what he's capable of i know what he's doing uh, I couldn't tell you on a statistical basis, Matt, you know, because he doesn't get a ton of goals and assists, but his, uh, you know, duels won and challenges won, I can look that up and see if it ranked, or you can look that up and see if it's statistically any better. Uh, Ozzy and I do have a long history together because I remember watching him when he was playing for Charleston when I used to play against him, and he got underneath the skin of my best player, Leighton O'Brien at the time. And ever since that moment, you know, I always watch out for him. So uh, my expectations of his play are very high. And he's uh, accepting of my challenge to him. He actually enjoys a good challenge. So I told him he needs to for these last 13 games. Well, I had the conversation before the 14th game. You, you got you to gotta get up to here.